I do hope you're enjoying the terrine, my lord. One for It's made with my own hands, I bow and protest. Trust me, I'm not so blushing. Betsy, my dear. Is it not a good rape? <sighs> this is your gentle, sweet, smiling Fanny for you. My Miss Fanny, I disclaim her. She could never insinuate herself into my good graces again. Perfect depicts of two distressed lovers, as if they was drawn by Raffle Angelo. <laughs> you come to market for my daughter, sir? Hmm? Do you think I drive some kind of African slave trade with them? I deal frankly with you, sir. As a, I know you to be a man of business and a man of the world. Hmm. At present, on the day of my marriage to uh, Betsy, you agree to pay down the gross sum of eighty thousand pounds, do you know? Well. Now, if you will but consent to my marriage with Fanny, I shall waive my right to 30,000 pounds of the money I was to receive with Betsy. 30,000? Yes, sir. And accept Fanny with 50, instead of Betsy with 80. 50,000? Instead of 80, 30 for you. Hmm. There may be something in that. Hmm. Since you're only transfer from one girl to another, it's no more than so much stock, you know. <laughs> I can't stir a step in this business without consulting my sister Heidelberg. She's worth about 100,000 to our family, huh? all of which she intends to leave us. Now, Betsy is a darling, and I can't see how far she may resent any slight to her favorite niece. You must go and break the matter to her first. If you get her to listen to reason, I will then step in to reinforce your arguments. But not a word about the 30,000, either to her or Lord Ogilby. That's our secret, our bond. I'm dumb, sir. I'm dumb. <laughs> <laughs> 